Hello, my name's Lee Andrew, and today I'm going to show you how to create warp plasma. Um, some of my friends have asked me how you would go about creating, say, a warpness cell that's been ruptured venting plasma in Lightwave. I've, I've been on and off trying to do this with uh, some of my methods, and eventually I came around with something, uh, in, well, with the particle emitter. I was trying some of the wind emitters and collision stuff, and just didn't quite work out until... Um, I found a you know a way that that looks quite decent as well even when you tweak it a lot and uh, so to make it look like canon as possible in the show I was looking for some references and the only thing I could find was Star Trek Voyager the episode uh, Unimatrix Zero Part One right at the end uh, with this clip. And right there, as you can see, venting plasma, you've got all these small particles uh, coming out of the warpness cell, but you've also got this nice streak of fluids coming out, I suppose. And I was trying to get that kind of effect going, not necessarily, you know, the particles as, as much. But um, as you can see here, I've got something very similar going on. So I've got a, a emitter emitting some of the particles that I want, but I'm also giving some extra detail uh, in the particles itself. Let me just do a quick render for you, and then you can see what it looks like. So there you go, that's our plasma. Now, if you apply that to a warp cell, to any ship, you know, any 3D model, sort of get that same kind of uh, effect going. Obviously, you would have to tweak it depending on your um, scene, but um, just to get you started and you know get you the um, the basics going here so this is what it looks like when it's finished okay so I think that pretty much looks like um, warp plasma okay so to go ahead and create our own go to the items tab in this case we need a dynamic object and we need the particle emitter so it's really got the name emitter in there. You can you can change it whatever you want, plasma, you know. Basically this tutorial for yourself is going to be more or less copying what's on the screen. So just go to the properties. So double click on that. Uh, in there you can keep the value birth rate of 100 in there. If it's not set to 100, just, just put it in yourself. Then you want to generate it by seconds, not necessarily by frames, because there's no event going on. We just want constantly emitting. So just generate by, uh, by seconds. Put the nozzle down to sphere. Generate a size, 100 millimeters on all axis, and then a particle limit of 10,000. Um, without the particle limit, I've actually went up to 100,000 before, and then the rendering takes forever. There's more detail in there, but not necessary, especially not for fast action scenes where you don't really see the detail that uh, too well. Uh, even on the 1080p, you don't see uh, that much detail in the uh, warp plasma anyway. Okay, now we go to particle, the actual setting itself. Uh, put down particle weight uh, 0.329. That's actually just to sort of get it coming down just slightly but because it's in space you know there is no gravity as such you would have the particles moving in a slightly um, odd pattern but um, you, know, you can also leave it at zero but uh, just to make it vary a bit you know because it's going to be venting left and right um, it would be nice to have some uh, some difference in there particle size 0 0.3 then uh, we've got particle resistance again to get this sort of you know different pa uh, moving pattern in there put that down to 0 0.0096 and then particle lifetime I would put down 70 you can you know vary it to however you would like uh, it's just that for, for what I'm doing here this typical shape I just don't want it to go any further than this it'll go to motion tab and under velocity uh, have it 100% um, target I've put down uh, a null is a transparent object somewhere over here and the only reason is so that when the generator which is moving it's going to be constantly moving that way the null object the actual transparent object the particles are, tr are trying to fly towards it so it looks like it the, the actual plasma has some kind of wind impact it, you're basically forcing the plasma to emit this way and in reality it, it plas the particles are just trying to actually reach the null target and uh, so we've got the null down here, so you can see it's way over there. And all you do to create that null is just go here onto items tab, add null, just you know, either keep it with this name or just, just put down target if you will. And then just make sure that, that under motion it's set as the actual target. So wherever that null is positioned, that's where the particles will fly towards to. Then uh, we've got vibration, um, 0 0.69. Again, any values that I'm giving you is just a baseline. You can always adjust them to whatever your scene uh, needs. And, you know, this is just 
this is just creating warp plasma for your scene it could be anything else you could change it to orange and make it a fire whatever you want to do okay so um and etc <laughs> uh, i think the only thing you could could do is loop frame at 200 um it's basically just repeating the whole animation because as you can see i've got my scene actually set up to 750 frames right now this is just for demonstration purposes i don't actually have a need for that many frames right now this is just to demonstrate it for for some other projects that i have going on that's all you need here so you can close down this tab okay so let's go to the windows menu tab and go to volumetric and fog options and once in there double click and we've got this nice hypervoxel configuration menu right so as you can see i've got my emitter selected this is just a null so that's not a particle emitter so that's why it's faded out you can activate it by clicking on here but there's no need because it won't do anything for us so click on the emitter and now this is where you know all the uh, texturing and uh, the size variation happens so the way I have it set up is particle size 358.8026 millimeters. Um, then you go down to velocity, so align to path and maintain uh, volume. Now I've got a texture set, so we've got the outer edge that's fading away sort of, and that's what we're trying to represent here. So we'll just create one of these. If you just click in here, that's how you create one of these and just press X to get rid of them. So I've got two set here. Um, this one is because uh, it's not representing actual color, it's representing a certain uh, size or percentage. So you can set to layer type gradient, everything else stays the same. Particle edge, and in there you've got set the value, the first value is 7.5%, alpha 100%, so that's basically the transparency of the pixels right here. Click on the next one, see its value, so that's value of 100%, and then parameters 2.105, and that's value 0%, 1% alpha, and parameter is 39.86. Okay, so that's for the texture. Again, in this case, it's not a texture. We're just trying to make it half transparent. That's how you can control that. Okay, so now we're going into the actual color shading. Um, also, I think there's one thing I forgot. We've got to make sure that the object type is a sprite. Otherwise, you're just going to have a round blob or just something very thin like, like this and you can barely make it out. Right, so in the shading, we've got basic color setup. Um, so you can choose anything like TL, like luminosity 100%. Opacity 38.5 and density 100%. Number of slices just one, that's okay because we don't want to have several variations inside the particle. And then what you know, what light should it be affected? Because if you don't choose a light, you're not going to see the particle. Now I've chosen light in here, it's just the basic light in the scene setup. So if you've got one specific light or light source in in the scene, that's what I'm using to uh, to light this particle. Okay, now we've got some several options in here. So for the color, I'm using a, another color variation. So while you can see I'm using something like teal, you can also set different color variations in here to get a bit more depth. So the further out it is, it's going to be light blue. That you know, and the closer it gets, it's going to be dark blue. So, uh, but again, the maximum I want to go here is 38.5%. 30, and the only thing I did change it to was turbulence. Again, that might be already set uh, as a default uh, in your emitter. If not, that's all I'm, I'm doing. And then I'm just using the basic values, nothing too fancy here. And basically, that's all it is. Um, if in your scene you don't see the particles or they're not uh, big enough, again, just play around with the particle size because the bigger you create them, you see the bigger they'll be in the actual scene. So um, because some there are some people who uh, create different kind of camera types and then they're a bit confused as to why they're not seeing, you know, what 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 they were actually seeing in the tutorial. Basically, that's all there is to it. So now that you've got that set up, again, when you do a quick pre-render, this is what you should be seeing. Like I said at the beginning, this is more like a copy and putting your own values sort of tutorial, where you just basically read off the screen what I've got, and I'm just, to make it even easier, just, just reading what I'm seeing on the screen. Because, uh, again, if I had a website where I could put this up, um, you know, could, I would basically make this available, but then again, you do want to know how to actually create this object and not just load it into your scene, because you might want to manipulate uh, the object yourself, you know, you might need, or might have a specific project going, and you need to have a, a an object do and uh, doing its thing the way you want it to. I hope this was, uh, you know, a lot of fun, and uh, I hope that you were able to uh, recreate this warp plasma. Until then, take care.